Hello, this is Kevin, and today I'll be talking about the Cyclic Fly 6 CE. If you haven't heard of this uh, device before, it's a neat little safety camera that works from the back of your bike while providing safety lights, rear lights. So as you can see here, it uses a quarter turn system, much like the Garmin devices and how they mount onto your bike. So it's pretty easy. You can see that it uses a Velcro strap and it's pretty secure because on one side of the strap is a rubberized kind of grip. And uh, in this case, the black and all matches the aesthetic of my bike, which most bikes tend to be. So you give it a quarter turn and it clicks in place. So it's very secure. I've ridden it through rough terrain and hasn't fallen out on anything. So it's pretty good. You can see it's very sleek and minimal. So here's what the box looks like when you get it, when you order it. And if we look around, it's actually meant for road bikes, right? Uh, but it'll work for any bike. And uh, this time around, this version, which is a, I think the third version so far, it comes with 1080p full HD camera with audio. It has 100 lumen lights with multiple modes, seven hours battery life and so on. Six axis stabilization and so on. So it's pretty, pretty good. And the whole idea is you just leave it to keep recording, much like uh, those dash cam in the cars. What you see on the left is uh, the old box and then on the right is new one. Uh, so you can see just from the box alone, uh, how much more is packed in each box. And the whole idea is they've managed to minimize everything. So here it is side by side, the first generation and, and I think the third generation. And see, it's not just the size difference, but even the mounting mechanism is a little different. While the new one's using quarter turn system, the old one uses a sliding down mechanism. And I must tell you that having tried it a little bit, it can be quite tricky to slide in and out because it's pretty tight. And also it might take a bit more time to mount and dismount. Notice the power buttons as well. Uh, on, the, on both devices, you can control the power on and off as well as the lighting controls, the modes uh, from the other button on the other side. So here's the side with the power button. And this is what comes in a box in the first generation. Uh, you can see all kinds of rubber straps and all. This one is the new one and it's much cleaner, minimal, um, much tighter. Here's a very simple instructions to follow. All right, so it's easy to actually go about uh, mounting this and charging it. So I'm going to show you the waterproof uh, cover and basically on the top of the device, you'll see the only cover there is and both the micro SD card as well as the USB-C charging port is there. And yes, it appears to, to support, um, you, you know, uh, fast charging from USB-C. So it's pretty good. Um, I have a 32 gigabyte card in there, so, but you can put in a bigger one if you want. And uh, it's pretty solid. The light is pretty bright. And uh, the minute you try to turn it on, you can see in a while, um, it's, it's actually really bright. That's the power button right there. And I'm just gonna turn it on. So it starts up and then it starts flashing. So to control the flashing modes, whether you want it still or, or flashing different speeds, you use the button on the right hand side to control the modes. So here's a, you know, just fixed light and all that. Here's the key ones. I think there's about three or four modes. And here's what the iPhone or mobile app looks like. Pretty straightforward, you can see battery life and all that. And sometimes when you go to the market or whatnot, you have your bike park one side, you might want to put on the alarm system. So it, yes, it does have an alarm and it trips by when someone tries to move your bike. Okay, so I'm going to take you out now. Here's how it's mounted on my bike when we go out for a ride. It's pretty clean, it matches the aesthetic. And here's what the footage looks like. So I didn't color grade any of this. Um, it's actually what it is. I just turned down the volume. You do hear sounds, but I turned down the volume because my bike tends to be pretty loud, loud and noisy. Um, but otherwise, it's pretty clear. You can't hear too far, but you know, it's the traffic noise and all that. So pay attention to things like license plates and all that. That's what you'd be most concerned about. Below you have a timestamp and logo, which you can turn on and off. I, I leave it on, um, you know, for safety reasons. And uh, if you do get into a crash, it does have a feature where uh, it will lock the files to prevent them from erasure. Because the way this works is that uh, you, ju you just keep reusing the storage 
and it will uh, override the old files as it keeps recording video in a loop. So in this scene, you notice like various shadows and, and light and all that. And the big thing here is that because of the almost HDR light effect, uh, you can see that the bright lights are not, bright areas are not washed out. You can still see everything quite clearly and uh, so on. And if you notice that the camera seems to be swaying, it's, it's actually not. This is actually EIS, uh, in, the electronic image stabilization in motion. It tries to make the image stable while the bike's moving. And trust me, I've had this on rough terrain and it works pretty well. So you can turn EIS off. And if you do, I believe you do get a wider view of vision. Um, typically that's how it works for most of this electronic, not optical, but electronic stabilization. And it's got six axis stabilization, which is quite, quite rad. All right, here you see uh, me and Melvin Cheng actually going out for a night ride. And you're gonna see footage of what it looks like at night. And as you can see, it's not too bad at all. I mean, night is tough and uh, it's picking up all the details. You can actually see Melvin's face later in, in some of the scenes. His bright light is not washing out the entire image, which is very critical because for cars and motorbikes, their light would just block out everything, but it's still, you know, you're still able to discern some details. So it's very important right there. All right, so I keep riding and, it's, you know, this part is pretty well lit. It's still the road and all that. Uh, in a while later on, you will go through more challenging off-road terrain where, you know, there's no, there's no light whatsoever. So here you can still, just to let you see, here's an example of a car coming up and you can see that semblance of the license plate there. Um, you might have to freeze frame and all that. And here we are going through a tunnel under the expressway and uh, you can see everything still in detail. And we're climbing a hill and I'm like really pounding the pedals to climb. Yet the image stabilization is working pretty well so you don't get headaches watching this. Uh, it's pretty usable stuff. Right. Now here I am going across a railway bridge. It's now a, a you know, disused railway bridge and it's granite uh, pebbles and all that, uh, tracks and all that. So it's really bumpy stuff. Here's a really, you know, we're going into the woods already. So here's actually Bukit Tima Trail uh, and we're near the Bukit Tima Railway Station that's now abandoned already. And uh, all you can see is Melvin's lights. Um, otherwise the rest of it is just nature. So you can still see somewhat detailed. This is just to show you extreme examples. You probably never do this unless maybe you love riding very early in the morning or something like that. Uh, yeah, this just to give you a feel. This is what it looks like. It's a really tight package, does everything really well. And uh, so far, I really love it. It does its job. So if you want to find out more, go to cyclic.com and you can order one. They also have a Singapore online store as well, making it easy and see you at OCBC Cycle 2019, um, where I'll be riding.